For years, cynical politicians and greedy grifters have joined forces with right-wing extremists to pour gasoline on anti-LGBTQ hysteria and terrorize our community. My own governor, Ron DeSantis, has trafficked in that bigotry to feed his insatiable political ambition and propel himself toward the White House. We have been smeared and defamed. Hundreds of bills have been filed in order to erase us. Powerful figures have insisted that the greatest threats this country face are a teacher with they, them pronouns or someone in a wig reading Redfish, Bluefish. And all along we warned that these short-sighted political maneuvers would come with a human cost, but they've continued anyway. Even as queer kids told us that they were scared, that life was getting less safe for them, even as hate violence has escalated, as children's hospitals have faced mounting bomb threats, as armed protesters started showing up at pride festivals and brunches, as a donut shop in Oklahoma was firebombed for daring to host a drag show, even as five innocent people in Colorado Springs went into a space that was supposed to be safe for them and came out in body bags. The attacks have continued. We can be better than that. We have to be better than that. Right-wing extremism relies on this manufactured belief that its poison is inevitable, that resistance is hopeless, but I contend that taking a stand is necessary, that it is our duty We need to say without apology that people who endanger entire marginalized communities for social media content and fundraising fodder have no place in our politics. We need to hold accountable those who traffic in venomous bigotry to score cheap political points. We need to address how our obsession with easy access to guns takes dangerous hatred and makes it fatal. And we need to say unequivocally right here, right now, that LGBTQ lives matter, that trans lives matter, and that in this country that is not up for debate.